SBR in? <laughs> Whoa! All right, let's get started, guys. I don't know if I can even keep a straight face. I really don't think I can keep that. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Caliber Corner, uh, Season 3, Episode number 174. And today we're talking about our favorite calibers of ammo, just for whatever reason, all around use and application. Uh, viewers, feel free to chime in and tell us what some of your favorite types of ammo are, and we can have some discussions on it and why. I know, I know, the shelves are empty right now, and you can't find anything, and you're paying these awful prices right now but we can still talk about what kind of ammo is fun to look into maybe learn about a new kind of ammo that we didn't know anything about before we're also going to be taking some viewer q a today and more so anything else that happens to pop up in the discussion we're going to go ahead and include in that uh, discussion real quick before i forget i'll be doing a patreon live drawing at some point today um, we'll be giving away a really cool box of swag and different items to one of 45 46 patrons that i have and we'll do that drawing live uh, during the show. What's cool about my channel is if you are a patron of mine, uh, it's a $1 per month buy-in. And we do release the videos early for patrons. And then we also have these drawings every month. And I give away all kinds of cool gear. And this month's uh, drawing is going to be based around the AR-15. I've got several different AR-15-oriented items that are going to go in, in the package, as well as some clothes, some, some swag and fun stuff. So we're going to get that out there. And then also on my B channel, Coffee Computers and More, uh, check it out. Head over there, subscribe. If you like old school technology or you're into computers or you like drinking coffee, check out that channel. I'm going to be doing a live drawing on that channel. Maybe today, I don't even know, because we've got a 3,000 subscriber giveaway uh, for that channel too. And I'm, I've paired up with another coffee shop here in Nebraska, and I'm going to buy a box of swag from them and have it sent to you. So that's going to be some fun stuff coming up on the channel today. So make sure you guys uh, hang in there and watch for those notifications. Let's go and let the panel introduce themselves, and then we'll just talk ammo today. Let's just talk about what kind of ammo we enjoy shooting. If we're not going to shoot it, we can at least talk about it, right? All right, so on my left, we have another fellow in Nebraska, and we have got Defense Dad. Defense Dad, hey, greetings from the North Pole. Howdy. Mm -hmm. What you been up to these days? What's going on? Oh, just working, having fun, I guess. Sounds got a good. couple of new guns, and I'm going to make some videos. Okay, so tell us about your channel for somebody who doesn't know anything about it. Where can they find you? What's it called? And what do you have to offer? The channel's called Defense Dad. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. I actually am uploaded to Odyssey now and on Patreon. I uh, just started a channel to help other new, newer or new or newer gun owners to, you know, things that you can learn along the way and hopefully save them some money and protect their families. Right on, man. It's a great channel. You guys need to check it out. Really great production, too, of very well done videos. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely a good channel to check out. So head on over there and subscribe to Defense Dad's channel. All right. Uh, also joining us, it's been a while, but he's back. Hopefully he's with us for the whole time. It's showing you've got a strong signal strength over here on the gun tube side. So, Tony, what is new in your world? How are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing good. What's new is that I'm surprised that there's three people in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, we've got a strong showing going on today. There's three of us here. Well, you know, we're we're a flyover state, and if, if that means keeping people out of our state, having that kind of reputation, then so be it. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, you guys, you guys can always say there's more people living in Nebraska than Wyoming. This is true. This is true. And we have we have more cattle than people, which is something really cool to boast too. So there we go. Uh, yeah, so Wyoming has mountains, which are interesting. We've got hills. We have sand hills. We have prairie. We have little houses on the prairie. We have. Yeah, yeah. You've got Scott's Bluff. Yeah. Don't forget the National hey. Roller Skate Museum. I mean, we're high fluting here. Just for the record, Nebraska has a geographical point that is higher than Denver, even though Denver is the mile high city. Screw that. We're the mile high state, baby. There you go. So, so that's something worth looking into. So, Tony, what are you been up to these days, man? Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> right now, I'm chasing my dogs. What about the squirrels? How's the squirrel hunting going this winter? Has it been good? I haven't done any since I got these damn dogs. <laughs> you they do you adopt them. some dogs or what? Did your, did your wife make you get some dogs or what happened? Uh, my daughter was going to get me a dog for my birthday a uh, year ago. Okay. Actually, a year and a half. And didn't get around to it, so she had a pair of Catahoulas. And when the female had puppies, I got pick of a litter. So I took two. Ah. Uh -huh. So they're keeping you busy then? Uh, Catahoulas are not quite like most dogs. 
<laughs> so how so? How are they different? How are they? How, how can you possibly have? I mean, what is it that they do? What is it? Uh, they are super high drive hunting dogs. Oh, hey, that's good. That's a good thing. Okay. Plus, they tend to herd stuff. Yeah. They kind of sound like corgis, man. That's on my that's on my little guys. He could run all day if you let him. And they, you know, they're they're a herding animal by their by their breeding and their nature. So they tend to circle up groups of things like small children and sheep and uh and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. Corgis corgis don't weigh a hundred pounds. No, no, they're 35. That's enough. And you trip over them constantly, but I couldn't imagine tripling the size and having that kind of energy. Good God, man. Oh, these guys are babies. They're only like seven weeks old. So okay. still stepping on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, man, it's good to have you back. And you've been with us since like, I don't even episode one, if I'm not mistaken. You're the uh, you're the you're the godfather of the uh, the gun podcast here. So so there you go. It's good to have you back with us, Tony. Appreciate it, man. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. Sandhill Shooter. What were you going to say there? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, man. Go ahead and introduce no, yourself. No, that's cool. You. It wasn't my time yeah. to talk anyway. Sometimes no, okay. I, I forget and I go out of turn. No, I was just going to say in the state of Nebraska, if you go from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, you're going to drop about a half a mile in elevation or close to it. So, yeah, we've, we've got cool stuff. It all, all kidding aside, if you want to see some of the most beautiful country in the in the whole nation, you come out to uh, central Nebraska, west west central Nebraska in the Sand Hills and just go for a drive and, and take a compass because sometimes you get out there on some of them back roads, it's easy to get turned around and lost. Oh, yeah, I've done that a couple times. The, so. the good news is there's not a road every every mile. So, I mean, you get on a road, you, you pretty much, there's only one road for, mm -hmm. for quite some time. So, I mean, you can't really get too lost. Well, if you keep hey, going man. south far enough, at some point you're going to hit Interstate 80. Whether you can access it or not, you're going to see it. So, <laughs> if it's a sunny day, you can find south. This is true. Hey, this, is, this is a guy that loves Iowa and Kansas. Yeah, Nebraska is just like those two states put together, basically. The eastern part of Nebraska is kind of like, you know, you got the trees and you got the river valleys and stuff, but then you go out west, you got the open prairies and stuff. So it's very cool. If you like space, if you like beautiful sunsets, if you like the ability to shoot for miles, then this is definitely the place for you. So there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Say hi. So it's your little buddy. She's growing a lot since last time anybody saw her on camera. <laughs> but I wanted to turn on my camera real quick and just give a shout out to Stan at SS Pawn. Oh, yeah. Because I got that. this cool shirt from him. That. And uh, and also I wanted to to give a nod to the the cool lid that you're wearing there. I didn't I like get the it. worn one, you know. I I'm gonna make mine. I'm gonna make it earn that kind of wear. Well, tear, so. I've got one of those in gray and one in black, just like this yours. Is the, too, this is the so. church hat, and then that's the that's the weekend hat, right? That's the this, that's this is the yeah. This is the, the they call it a trucker style, but I tell you what, anybody can wear one of these. I, I pull it off. I think let's not let's not offend single shot there. Okay, only <laughs> only he can tell us if that's an authentic trucker style. So. <laughs> Why is it anytime it's a mesh hat, it's just a trucker style hat? I don't, I don't, you know, doesn't no. matter. It doesn't matter. No, it's they're cool, cool though. So, it's hey, cool. where do we pick up this awesome swag at? Because I did order this, I did buy this. Where do we get this? And, and I appreciate that. I'm going to get yeah. like a nickel now from, from that. Hey, man. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you go to blackswantactical.com. And then I don't think he's got me up on the, on the homepage. So just go to the collections okay. part and go in. There's a Team Sandhills collection. Um, he did just put out a commercial on YouTube yesterday and oh. it's flashing through really quick slides of the website and stuff. And, and my stuff does show up in like two slides. If you, you just got to look quick and watch it a couple times, but there's uh, also uh gorillas and guns is on there too. And I love that the eight yeah. revolver, that is such a sweet logo. So that's, yeah, I was, I was might, talking with Scott yesterday about some cool <clears throat> patch ideas or t-shirt ideas. So we'll have to see what we can, what we can get done. And, and Crumpy and I have been talking about some different shirts and stuff and i know i keep saying it every every week on my show they are coming um he's had a lot of stuff going on in his personal life that uh is kind of giving him some setbacks on on designing and you know apparently he's got other things other jobs besides making my t-shirts and i don't know i i didn't have any idea he didn't have anything else in his life but but me so hey that's that's <laughs> not a bad thing you know <laughs> oh, no it's, it's cool i get that he's he's very busy so um yeah. and, and he's not charging me uh, you know anything to to do this work for me? So I'm sure not going to complain about about how fast it gets done. 
Heck yeah. Well, it's good stuff. I got mine. It took, I think it took, a, it took a couple weeks for my hat to show, but it was over two holidays. I ordered it right before Christmas, I think. So it was Christmas and New Year's got in the way. Yeah, it's usually about a week or 10 days and, and you've got it unless you've paid for the expedited shipping. So okay, uh, it's, it's good stuff. And, and I just want to throw out a plug in case I anything happens and, and we get ice on the power lines and I drop out or something. Oh. But um, I am going to be on this uh, today's weekly bullet with Paul Lathrop over on the Second Amendment Foundation channel. Okay. So uh, anybody that wants to go check out the weekly bullet, uh, he's got, since Paul started working for SAF, he, he does a daily um, interview five days a week on the weekdays, and he calls that the daily bullet. And then um, now on Saturdays at noon central, he does kind of a weekly wrap up, and he's got usually one or two people on there with him um, kind of just sounding off. So today's my day. I have the day off, and I get to hang out with you until you're done, and then I get to do whatever I want until noon. Dude, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's going to be gonna be pretty pretty cool stuff. Wow. And, and then I want to throw out one quick plug, if I can, if the dog doesn't yeah. want to talk. Um, <laughs> right. She, she wants to make sure you know she's here, or that I know she's here. Um, this week on the Get Off My Lawn podcast on Tuesday night at 9 Central, I'm going to have um, not like a special guest where we devote the whole night to him, but if everything works right, if you've ever seen the Matt Locke show, and Locke with an E-L-O-C-K-E, um, if you haven't checked out Matt Locke, go, go do it because he's a super, super cool guy and, and he actually uses his head for, for more than just growing hair, kind of like me. I'm not that good at that second part, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, he's going to be, gonna be sitting in on the panel and kind of weighing in on some of the stuff. We're going to do not so much like a rant night, but there's just a bunch of stuff that I never take the time to make those little short the way I see it videos anymore. Mm -hmm. We're just going to cover a bunch of those mm -hmm. in, in one night, Tuesday night. So it should be a lot of fun. And having Matt in there, I think, is really going to make it a lot more fun. So you had mentioned where we can listen to you. When you say the channel, are we talking podcasts in SoundCloud or Stitcher or iTunes? Where are we going to find you or find this kind of media or the XM radio channel? Where is it? I, I, ooh, I should talk to XM. That's that's I how I know I'm one step closer to making it when I'm on XM. Yeah. No, um, you can go to Anchor and just search Sandhill Shooter, and Anchor will actually show you all the different um, podcast apps where you can find me. Apple, okay. Google, um, Spotify. I think I'm on Stitcher. I don't remember about SoundCloud yet. Still waiting, I think, on that one. Okay. Uh, okay. You can catch me on YouTube or Facebook under Sandhill Shooter. Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Get on over there and subscribe, guys. All Thank right. Let's quit chewing on my friggin' targets. <laughs> You better watch out. They're going to chew on your Glocks because they're going to think that they're chew toys, Tony. <laughs> I don't they own get the all Glock. those marks in them. They're going to think it's Tony like doesn't own anything that's not stainless steel or blued steel. So I think he's. <laughs> I know, that's why I said that. <laughs> that. All right, that is a fact. No, now you've got an SD9 VE, which is fine because it's basically just a Glock anyway, but cheaper and better. So it's stainless. <laughs> it's stainless, exactly. Um, exactly. I, I don't know about better when you pull that trigger, but it is know. definitely less know. expensive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shots fired. Hello. Shots fired. Um, moving on. Squib. Squib, what's going on, man? Is that coffee kicking in yet? Are you waking up? What are you drinking today, anyway? What's 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 in the uh, mug? Uh, I'm drinking uh, Arbuckle's Christmas cookie. Oh, yeah. Dude, Arbuckle's coffee is so good. So worth the price. Made in Arizona. It's been around for a long time. That is some tasty stuff. Yeah, right. well, I, I don't know that you and I should be doing any coffee reviews until we know the whole bean or the whole <laughs> the whole berry of the coffee. We uh we get some interesting comments that people leave on our coffee review videos, and you know, like sometimes I'll put I'll put this I'll put all this time into making this video, and I really do the research on the coffee, and I I try to bring that to the audience. And the comment that I get from somebody is, "Dude, where'd you buy that dish towel?" It's like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I, I just like Walmart, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you know what you mean about it. But, but yeah, yeah, so Squib and I, we're going to on air live. We're going to consume uncooked, unroasted coffee berries. Now, I don't know where we're going to find them. South America is a long ways away. I, I guess we're going to have to, <laughs> yeah, maybe, we're going to have to book a flight. <laughs> maybe Whole Foods has has the raw berry and we're going to eat it and see what happens because we don't know coffee until we've eaten a, 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 a raw berry, according you, to one of our viewers. So. If you have a coffee shop in the area that roasts their own beans, they might. Well, not. but the green bean has already been shucked. I mean, are we talking? Yeah. It looks like a yeah. cherry. The actual coffee itself, when it gets plucked, it's like a little, like a little, you know, like a little cherry, basically. And uh, you, know you got to take off the. Is. 
I don't know. I, 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 I've got access to green beans, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll keep things moving. So, Squib, what's coming up on your channel? Give us a little teaser. You're always reviewing products and stuff. What, what is, what, what's coming up on the channel, man? Oh, uh, any idea? Know. I scheduled some stuff uh, the beginning of the week. I can't even remember what I, I put in there. More of the same old, same old. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to film a, a bunch of videos like on a Saturday mm -hmm. and then populate the, the, the playlist. studio. And then I'll go back later and select days and times to schedule them to publish. So I can't cool. even remember what I did. Yeah, that's all right, man. That's all right. Cool. All right. Okay. And last but not least, we got the one, the only single shot. Single shot. Are you home yet? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a long way from home yet. <laughs> no, I know. It's giving you a hard time. So, so what's going on you. your channel, man? You got a cool YouTube channel. It's single space shot exclamation point. Yep. What, uh, what, uh, what, what's your channel all about? It's all about the single shot variety of firearms, pistol, rifles, shotguns, etc. And uh, I cover quite a lot of that. I've also got a segue that uh, I call Single Shot Echoes. And some of those opinions, they're all mine, but some of those opinions are very strong. So if uh, you get weak at heart or children around, don't play them around them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You should always, anyway. always preview ahead of time the content on our gun podcast. I mean, a lot of us are really trying to make a good effort, trying to make family-friendly podcast oh, yeah. to watch the language if you want something you can sit around and listen to your kid or if you're driving you're playing in the car your kids aren't gonna it'll probably put them to sleep but you know what no. you yeah. about it. you're playing be it up sure, the be sure yeah. i ain't on the panel yeah oh, tony, yeah. tony <laughs> you do it you try really hard man you do try hard on this show to really uh keep yourself in check and i, I mean i've always appreciated that you know over the years and stuff so well, i do i've uh, got a lot of i've got a lot of open air speaking i'll put it that way so i'm a ham radio operator i've been oh. in that for many many years uh i've done live shows on the air such as this one here yeah uh i've done a lot of uh public involvement you know ex deputy sheriff firefighter one first responder blah 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 <laughs> so <laughs> got a lot of stuff going on plus driving a truck oh yeah so yeah. but i appreciate everybody uh uh, mentioning that as well from time to time because it's a it's an industry that doesn't get much for accolades and uh, we're out here running in all the weather so trying to supply everybody with everything that uh, you guys have got to have oh, yeah. and I wanted to say good morning to the chat as well yeah yeah no man I appreciate what you do and, and again it's a you know, if we didn't have the trucking industry, there's a lot of empty shelves that we'd have. Yes, we have trains, but many times you got to get that stuff off the trains into the stores, and the train ain't going to pull it behind Walmart. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. check. yeah. trains Very don't go stuff. to the Kroger. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, hey, just a uh, quick reminder that today's episode is sponsored by SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Make sure you guys uh, check out SS Pond. All you got to do is take that Lexington exit right off Interstate 80. SS Pond. There we go. Represent. It's just off to the right <laughs> side. Pop in there. Say hello to Stan. Check out the firearms. Pick up some cool merch. And SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. Let's give a little shout out to the people that are over on the YouTube side. I forgot to do that last week. We've got people that have been watching this show for years. So out there we have SS Pond. We've got Gizzard Gary. we got the Kingpin out there promoting all of our channels. Sandhills is over there. And over here we got Beretta Man, two-way defender in the house. Gizzard Gary. DJ, 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 play nice. We've got some G23, some Tommy Gun going out there saying Canada is running short on ammo now. Tommy Gun, I don't know, man. I personally am not worried. You know, a lot of us have been stocking up for a long time, but when you go to the store and there's nothing there, it's a little depressing, man. And I got a feeling that the rest of the, uh, the country is going to start catching up with it. It was kind of funny. I was watching a TFB video where they were talking about owning a firearm in Israel. They yeah. did an interview with an, like, an IDF officer, and they were talking about what the person has to do to own a handgun in Israel. And he was saying that you have to certify every year with at least 50 rounds. And one of the complaints of people is that the ammo is 25 to $45 a box for 9 millimeter. And I'm like, and this is a new video. I don't think he understood mm. maybe that the, the prices right now for 9 millimeter are ridiculous. If you can't get it in a retail store or a mom and pop gun store, just like the normal MSRP, it is mm. crazy what people are, are paying. I did see in a yeah. local gun store. A box of 20 rounds of ball ammo, American Eagle, 300 blackout, 
for fifty dollars, and that right there just like. That was like a $17 box before all this. So anyway, okay. I told myself we weren't going to scream about prices and stuff because we're going to talk about ammo, but Squib, go ahead. But here's the thing. If you guys want ammo to become plentiful and you want the prices to go back to normal, you have to do one thing. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. But That's it's, literally it. It'll okay, never bro. happen that way because when somebody else sees it, they're going to think, oh, my God, here's my opportunity to get 500 rounds, 200 if, rounds, if 100 you rounds. If you didn't buy it before now, okay, tough, it, uh, whatever. If, if you look at the consumption habits of human beings, we're one of those people where if it's there and you want it, you're going to get it and you're not going to take anything else into consideration. And I agree with you 100%, Squib, because nothing's going to change, but – for the person that's been waiting for primers, if they got an opportunity to snag up a thousand, they're going to buy them if they've been waiting months for them. Somebody who wants nine that has it and wants more, whether they want to resell it or not. I mean, it's just, no, it's I, gonna, I, I, I realize yeah. that it's not going to stop people. If I go out there and say, look, you want to fix the problem. You're yeah. the problem. Only you can fix it. No, people are going to go, no, I'm still going to do it. I'm going to, there was a guy at my FFL yesterday going, you got any 270 WSSM? I'm looking to stock up on as much as I can. I'll buy every box you've got. And I'm thinking, dude, I don't even think you can find that when it ammo is normally. I'm just like, well, and there, and part of it is a lot of people are just worried. What if I can ever get this ammo again? This is my hunting ammo, or this is my, my, my range ammo, or this is, you know, I just think that it's going to, I, I hate to say it, but I think it's going to take years for this situation to resolve itself. If at all, I mean, I really think that we are in this one for the long. Looking at how it is right now, and looking at what's sold out online, and looking at the used prices right now, I mean, it's just it's going to take years for this stuff to clear itself up. So, I don't know. Hey, I still got to continue with the uh, the YouTube side real quick here. We got Net Flutter out there. We got Russell Jimmy out there. Mike is out there. We got Ozzy Orsborn joining in today. Again, SS Ponds out there too. Make sure I don't miss anybody. Patriot in the Dark's out there. G twenty three. One of the first people to check in this morning. We had M. Gabriel out there. Uh, John 12 Gage is in the house. Sandhill Shooter. MKJO is out there too. Tacos and French fries. Good to see you. Alpha Q2 is out there also. And are we missing anybody? I hope not. I think that's about everyone. Oh, yeah. Hootie Who. Hootie Who is one of the first people to check in. He's excited. He finally found a Ruger Ranch 762 by 39 bolt action. That's like the unicorn. I've I haven't I haven't been looking. I've actually been looking for him online to see if I could find one or even locally. And the Ruger Ranch bolt action 762 by 39 is like sold out everywhere. You can get it in 350 Legend all day. You can get it in 556 and 308 just locally. But that X39 one is just a really really hard one to find. Uh, let's see. Tommy Gunn says primers are getting hard to find. Yeah, they're always sold out here. Our, our shop will get them in once in a while. And I think there's a limit of, I can't remember what the limit is. Defense Dad, do you know what the primer limit is at, at Shields? I know you don't, you don't reload, but do you remember seeing the sign? Is it a hundred? Or is uh, it, I might be a hundred round, a hundred. Last primer. time I saw it was a thousand, but I haven't a looked thousand? a long time. Okay. Yeah. That little glass case that they have is just dry anyway. So it doesn't really matter, but, um, so anyway, let's just get into the discussion. Let's just talk about what are some of our favorite calibers, whether we can get them or not is irrelevant. What do you just enjoy shooting in general? What's kind of your go-to? You see something, it's a caliber that has a lot of flexibility. Maybe there's a lot of different grain weights available for it, a lot of different bullet types available, or maybe it's a wildcat single shot, or maybe it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a certain type that you just love to shoot for whatever reason. So single shot, I'm going to start with you because you load calibers that I didn't even know existed. So what is your what is your absolute favorite all-time caliber single shot? What would you say? I prefer it to be in a gun that your average person could buy. So if you want to say, oh, like, you know, like it's a howitzer 150 millimeter shell. Okay. <laughs> cool, but let's try to maybe get something out there that somebody can look into, can research, maybe go buy. Single shot, what do you think, man? I want to start with you on this one. Oh, definitely the vener venerable 22 long rifle. Really? Automatic yeah. or revolver, either one. That's a great starter caliber. You can keep yourself in tune with it reasonably inexpensive. Yeah, that's you don't reload it, but that's yeah. fine. But, you know, I that's how I did a lot of my uh, my preparation for the Nationals. 22 caliber, uh, uh, high standard gold top. And I had to maintain a certain average before I could even shoot with the team so yeah 22 caliber you know your 22 long rifle your uh, 22 magnum in some cases uh my other go-to is a 45 acp hmm. i've got four of them so 
it is you a know, fun round. I mean that and yeah. there's and that that was one of the last calibers. I mean that's been in stock a couple times in our local gun store here. Um, and it's it it had it was one of the last ones to sell out. That and ten millimeter and a little bit of three fifty seven sig were like the last boxes I remember seeing on the shelves before stuff just completely got wiped out. Before it shows up occasionally. So single shot, you were gone last week, weren't you? Yeah, I had a lot of stuff going on in the morning. Yeah. I never had a chance to get in with you guys until at just about the end of the show. So. Yeah, I apologize yeah. for that. No, no, but, that's okay, uh, we talked about 22 LR. Just said, you know, yeah. you get the fact you get a big box of it. You can get platforms of firearms that replicate the size and manual of arms of of your your centerfire weapons. Uh, you right. know, you can get a 22 version of the popular platforms like a 1911 or if you like a Breda 92 style or even Glock, AR15, whatever. There's even 22 LR or AK47 variants out there you can buy. The fact you can train and plink around. And oh, have yeah. boxes. And even if you had to pay they, $60 or $70 a box per yeah. round, it's still one of the best deals out there. So that that's is. a solid argument that 22 LR would be one way to go. Um, now, I yeah. I just saw a video from uh, Iraqi veteran, veteran 8888 there yesterday. He was reviewing that, uh, I think it's a TX-22. Oh, the Taurus? Did he get the competition uh, one now? Did he get the new one? With the red dot? Yeah, he got no, he got the oh. one that's got the interchangeable uh plates that's that yeah, the TX competition. Right. Which he'll that get it looks like too. a nice little handgun right there. Yeah. We had talked about so. that one, I think, two or three weeks ago. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> that if you ever get a chance, check out my critical review of the 17 WSMI is that what that was called? Or that, the, that wasn't supposed to be up on the screen yet. Oh, the seventeen WSMI. You got to watch my review of that round. That that was the game changing round that came out two years ago. Check it out, and it's I for incinerator round because it it's uh, it's yeah. I can't say much about that, but Boy, that uh, thing sounds like a barrel burner, <laughs> dude. It has it has like 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 one hundred forty five grains of powder behind it. I mean, it's no. <laughs> I I'll, you got to check the video out for yourself. Type in type in Travis P11 and then type in 0.17 WSM or HSM something like that. So, yeah. But but anyway, so so single shot, what are some of the other variants of 22 long rifle that that are popular? I've seen 22 shot shells, I've seen 22 short. We've got the 22 Calibri, which I think is what just Calibri, a primer sure. round they use for popping balloons basically. Yeah, all real quiet. Uh, what are what are some of the other some of some of the other some favorite variants of 22 LR that you shot? Like what else is out there? Well, I shot the hyper hyper velocity, the standard velocity, match grade, uh, 22 short, long, and long rifle. Longs are obsolete, I think. <laughs> it's it's the same way with the shorts. It's extremely hard to find those mm -hmm. those two there. But uh, there's all kinds of. Uh, different types of ammo for the 22 you get you even get a little uh crimped top uh now well, basically a rat shot it's a real oh, fine shot yeah, yeah 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 and you've Short also got point. from cci if you've got uh uh access to the uh, shot shells they're little blue capsules inside of a 22 long rifle casing mm -hmm. Oh, I should have got all these. All I've got a bunch of those in the back here. I should have got those out to show them off because I got some CCIs I've never even fired before. So, yeah, no. the, uh, short effective range. Go ahead, Tony. The shorts are not, or they weren't. Now today, everything's hard to find, but the shorts were not too hard to find. Hell, I've got. Ooh. Those are nice little practice rounds. But just when you look range. on the shelf, you might only find one or two brands, or you'd only find a couple different green weights of shorts. You didn't have a lot of selection just locally. Maybe you do. We didn't like even in our Walmart when they still carried it. You know? Oh no! no I ordered all everything yeah. I got online. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. So twenty two LR. Okay, good choice. All right. Uh, single shot. Any other calibers that you really enjoy shooting? You said forty-five ACP. What's 45. your favorite Wildcat round? What's your favorite Wildcat round? Because there was oh, one you and I were talking about. That three fifty-seven Herit. <laughs> three fifty-seven what? Herit. It's that a Herit. short. Okay. Yeah, it's a shortened up thirty thirty case that's been blown out to three fifty-eight diameter. That thing has some very surprising horsepower. I really was impressed with that. And I'm using a 12-inch uh, bull barrel off, a, off the uh, contender frame. That, that in the 30 Herit, 
was designed for the steel shooters along with the uh, the TCU lines uh, six six five seven and I heard tell there was a 270 TCU but I've not run across it I've got those two sets and uh, but something that's unusual to shoot and uh, fun to fun to remake fun to recaliber is uh, that uh, 357 Herit and the 7 millimeter TCU because you take your 223 and, and reform that into a uh, 7 millimeter caliber, something like the 300, but longer. So this 357 you're talking about, how hard is it for you to manufacture your own or reload? Is it is it easy for the most part? Because you're saying 3030 oh, 30 yeah. brass. I mean, what about getting the dies and stuff? It's not an issue at all finding what you need to reload it. No, no. Most of the time, you can get those from uh, either uh, Hornady or uh, oh, Thompson Center used to make them. I've got to say the old ones, the old three fifty seven Herit original dies. No, and uh, I think about the hardest part of uh, making either one of those, the thirty or the three fifty seven. Mm -hmm. is cutting off the excess brass. I was wondering uh, about that. So trimming it, is that, do you have to have more of a commercial grade trimmer to do something like that? Or what, what do you tend to use? Do it all on my uh, RCBS Trim Pro motorized. Okay, I that's what I, okay. Use okay. that one that I use in the videos. And uh, it yeah. takes it takes it a minute to get it down there. But, yeah. you know, there's quicker ways to do it. But I prefer to do that, do it that way, just uh Cut it off on the trimmer. Same way with the 30 hair. The 30 hair, it's just a shortened up 30 30, but there's quite a lot more of that uh, top brass that you have to remove. That's an interesting little uh, caliber to play with as well. Well, you know, it's interesting with some of these calibers that you're talking about. It's, it's a shame that they didn't become more popular because they have so much application or so much potential. But if the industry won't jump on board that caliber or you don't have a bunch of manufacturers lined up for it, you might not see wide variety of firearms available in it without having to get some custom work done or being limited to like one manufacturer, or, you know, right. Now, um, the most popular one that I've seen cross that bridge is a seven thirty waters. That's a 30, 30 case. That's been neck down and blown out on the shoulder to a seven millimeter. I've got a oh, Winchester wow. 94 that's chambered in that. I've also got a 15 inch barrel for the contender frame in 730 waters both of those seem to be very accurate and you can always go to a custom gun shop if you wanted to get a barrel made for you right i mean that's yep. always an option there's always somebody out there that will take your money and make for you whatever you want right yep. you're yeah, not it's yeah. not like you just get it you're totally out in the cold if you really enjoy a caliber you know if you want to put the time and money into it there's going to be a platform out there a person that will make you whatever you want that's the nice thing about oh, it yeah. you know oh yeah, yeah. there's e arthur brown there's uh, Mike Del uh, Bellum's TCs. There's match grade machine, and I have one of match grade uh, machine, uh, one of their barrels in 256 Winchester. That thing is a tack driver mm -hmm. and very accurate. That 20, little 25 caliber. That's remade from uh, 357 Magnum cases. Oh wow, that's fun. That's a oh, fun caliber. Cool. Oh. All right. All right. Uh, Tony, what about you? What is your absolute favorite caliber that you could just shoot every day for the rest of your life? What is your what is your go to? What do you really enjoy? If you could shoot it, what would that caliber be, Tony? 22 LR. Same thing. So if what I is it? We have one. Yeah. That would be it. Is it just the just the mass you can take with you in such a small package in terms of the box of it? Is it the cost? Is it the application all around? Versatility. So talking about this versatility what about the self-defense side is it pointless to have a 22 lr for self-defense because i've been Will told that stand there and let me shoot you with one yeah. oh, absolutely not i would never step in front of one there you go <laughs> we used to shoot each other with bb guns as kids we used to run around and play army and that was bad enough i couldn't imagine something with some actual velocity behind it um, i've heard lots of people run down the 22 saying it's not good for that kind of thing but not a goddamn one of them let's stand there and let's shoot them with it oh, yeah, right. no 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 and i mean especially if you take it and pair it up with something with a longer barrel or you're talking through a rifle or you step up to 22 magnum i mean you've got obviously i mean, i would encourage somebody if you're going to carry but i mean i've got family members that what they have for home defense are taurus tx22s and they love them and they shoot them well and they've got 16 plus one plus a second mag to back it up of of, of cci mini mags 
I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to take 16 rounds of center mass, uh, you know, CCI mini mags I, nope. to the chest. That's not appealing to me. So it might not drop you on the first round, but I think it's going to sting, right? So there is something to be said about 22 LR and that kind of an application. If that's what you got, you run what you got, right? Well, the thing is, is it doesn't have to drop you with one round. All it's got to do is stop you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, when you realize you're hit and now you got to go to the hospital and you're the bad guy, you're screwed. Because <laughs> they're going to find you unless you got somebody that's going to take care of that for you. You're going to try to do it yourself. But on the, other, on the other hand, there's been a lot more people killed with a 22 than there is just about any other caliber. Okay, so I've heard that claim. Where is that substantiated? I'm not doubting you at all, but where do we hear that, that specific detail? Was it because back you in the day what it was, or is there some... Where do I heard this? I've heard that that the 22 is, has killed more people, you know, whatever in self defense or non combat situations than any other caliber. But where is that? Where that you, story? You start? can look it up online, and they'll give you a list of what DOJ fighter. Yeah. Uh, okay. And 22 was number four on the list. Probably. Do you think it's because I looked? Besides, they're cheap, inexpensive throwaway guns. Is that kind of what it is? Just the. Just the, the the ability to acquire an inexpensive twenty two for whatever robbery or mugging or something. What do you think it is? Uh, I think what I think it is 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 the ability for younger people and older folks, especially the older folks, the less recoil, the easier handling, and and then of course to go right along with everything else, the accuracy. So they're going to yeah. depend on a weapon that they're going to be able to handle, and that happens to be it. And how many people own firearms that don't own a twenty-two? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody's got one. So yeah, I got one in the bathroom drawer. <laughs> I keep it as my my kind of drawer <laughs> gun. I've got my Jimenez J twenty-two sitting in there right now, and I've had many twenty-twos in the past. Oh, and we got a my wife's got a TX twenty-two. I got to sit oh, right yeah. over here in the little soft case behind me. So she loves shooting that. Yeah, they're they're all, they're all over the place. So that's okay. Yeah, two for twenty two LR. We might have to. This might be the uh, the official caliber for today to talk about. So now the other stuff, you know, beyond just twenty two forty four Magnum, of course. Oh, I yeah yeah yeah. And then yep. thirty out six. Well, honestly, it would be twenty five out six, even though I don't own one. Okay. I yeah. love that round. That's even one I don't have. <laughs> there you I go. Love the round, but that, it's thirty out six is. There's a lot more choices for thirty out six. Yeah. Oh yeah. That and some of the seven millimeter Magnum rounds. Well, when you go into that arena, those are some of the few boxes of ammo that I'm still seeing on the shelves in the in the rifle area, like the center for center file rifle ammo section at uh, my local gun store. So. Um. All right, so Squib, let's move on to you. What is your go-to favorite all-time caliber, man? Is there something you, you – you only had one caliber to shoot the rest of your life. What would it be, or what are some of your favorites, uh, Squib? What would you say? Uh, only one for the rest of my life. Oh, anything. What's your favorite caliber you just enjoy shooting for the heck of it? What is the – maybe it's fun to reload. Maybe it's fun to experiment with. Maybe it's fun to shoot. What is it for you? Do you have one? I don't have a favorite. No, I mean I just sit here and start naming off dozens of calibers. It's that's, yeah, that's that's a tough tough question to answer with any sort of, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it's like you know I'll see a certain caliber. It's like oh, I cannot wait to take this rifle out. I love to shoot this gun. This is a fun gun to shoot. You know, so I've got I've got a couple different ones that I that I really enjoy. But okay, hey, there's no, nothing wrong with that. And Squib, you shoot a variety of different calibers, and you know, if it's yeah, it's not a problem. So okay. Um, defense dad, what about you? What would you say? What's your kind of your favorite go to? Well, so I would kind of like squib. I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite in, in the to me, kind of depends on what gun you're shooting out. If it's nine millimeter, some of it's more fun to shoot out of different guns or yeah. vice versa. But if I have to, I'll, I'll actually give you three. Okay, so for nostalgia purposes, 22. Yeah. Um, both for shooting with my grandpa growing up, I have his gun, and the time I spend with my daughter shooting that. Uh, those are my favorite times. Um, I kind of stick to the more mainstream uh, calibers because I'm, again, a newer gun owner. I like to shoot a lot. I like to shoot cheap. So my second one would be 9mm. There's so many choices of handguns with cool guns. You have a choice of 9mm more so than almost anything else. 
but if I'm really being honest, if it's just me for my pleasure out of anything I got in my collection is my Marlin 336-3030. I, I love shooting that gun. It's the most expensive caliber I own to shoot. Um, but I, just now. Right, yeah. It's, it's just <laughs> I, I have the most enjoyment, uh, oh, more so than over my ARs, is shooting that gun. So there would be my three, I guess. Cool, cool. All God, right. We got to get together sometime. I'll let you shoot my uh, Marlin 95, 45, 70. I've, my buddy has one. I shot one hit recently. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, that's that's another one that I think it's kind of on our on our back burner. Any anything in forty five seventy just has that cool factor to it that we uh, love to kind of play around with. Yeah, someday I will have one of those all weathers just because I like the I, I like the forty five seventy and I love the look of that gun. Oh, mine's oh, yeah. a cowboy with twenty six inch octagon barrel. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um. All right, and last but not least, Sandhill Shooter. What is your favorite go-to caliber? What do you what, what do you enjoy shooting? What's the one caliber you just enjoy for the most part? You see us having the most utility. I'm, I'm yeah. like Squib. I can't say just one. It depends on the application. That's like saying, you know, what's your favorite tool out of your toolbox? Well, it depends on if I'm going to pound in a nail or, you know, change the license plates on my car. I mean, I'm not going to use a No, no, a freaking hammer will do both. It will, <laughs> but... Um, so my my self defense caliber that I've picked is nine millimeter, but I like three eighty too, or else I wouldn't I wouldn't have been okay yeah. with my wife having one of those. Yeah. For hunting deer, I like two seventy for just going out and having fun and and not spending you know thousands of dollars in an afternoon at the range. Definitely twenty two. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick just one for the rest of my life, it'd probably be the twenty two just for the simple reason that it, it is a lot cheaper. Um, I can take a lot more to the range with me. You, if you know what you're doing, you can take down a, a deer or anything smaller with it. Um, so it's not hey. ideal for a whole lot of, I mean, it's not the perfect round for a whole lot of applications, but it'll work in a pinch for most of them. So I would say if I had to pick one, it's probably going to be 22, but hey. that doesn't mean that it's necessarily I don't think I can pick a favorite. They're all my favorite. Yeah. Whatever caliber goes in the gun that I'm holding in my hand at that moment is my favorite. Favorite caliber. Yeah. You know, no, now, I mean, yeah. There was or is articles that you can look up from a woman in Alaska that killed an adult grizzly bear with a 22. I've heard lots of stories. I heard a story about a guy that was out hiking with his girlfriend in the mountains and all he carried with him was a little five shot 22 revolver snub nose and uh, for bears. And she knew a little bit about guns and, and she said, well, I don't, I don't think that's going to be quite enough to kill a bear if we come across one. And he said, well, I don't have to kill a bear. I just have to shoot you in the knee and then run. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, for me, wow. I love, yeah, again, for me, I guess it depends on what kind of platform I'm running. Uh, handguns. I love 357 Magnum semi-autos. I like 357 SIG, just the, the velocity, the power, the potential behind it for, for its intent and purpose. Um, just, you know, I just, I really have I've always, I've always shot 357 Magnum really well on any of the guns I've tested on the channel for rifles. Again, I am a big fan of the 22. I do like the utility of it, just the all around goodness of it. The fact that, it's inexpensive to get into if you want to get into shooting. I really like um, 300 Blackout, and the reason why is because what it was designed around, the fact that it has so much flexibility as around. There's so many different grain weights available for it, subsonic, you know, uh, supersonic. And, and I don't know. I know there's a lot of other rifles that have that option, 5.56 and 7.62 by 39. There's a lot of different grain weights. But what I like about 300 Blackout is the fact you can have such a compact firearm, say, for the truck gun or for home defense. It'll, it's, it's a very flexible round. The problem with 300 Blackout right now is the cost and the availability. It's just it's just not really out there. If you find it, it's going to be expensive. And I did stock up on it quite a bit. It was it was, It's an expensive caliber to get into even when it wasn't pandemic pricing. It was still 17 or 18 bucks a box locally for just ball ammo 300 Blackout. But the fact that you can reload it and it's not too difficult to do. Um, when you can find the components, if you have the, if you have the components, right? But uh, just just kind of the overall application of it, I really like that. It does shoot really well. I've tested it in 
eight and a half inch and ten and a half inch firearms. So that's one to consider. But again, the price with it is 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 the one factor that prevents me from shooting it more. Um, what really sucks is Barnall. Uh, they started importing from Russia steel case three hundred blackout ammunition, and the idea was that it would let you shoot your three hundred blackout for about half the cost of a normal box. It was like ten dollars a box for twenty rounds of Barnall. And you can't reload it, obviously, because it's steel case. Problem with that is that's now become a twenty to twenty-five dollar box of ammo, and the whole intent was to bring it over so people could buy it cheap. But it became so popular when it came over here that everybody snagged it up. And now the prices on it are crazy. I've got, I think, a hundred rounds of it. I only bought five boxes because I didn't know if it would cycle well through my three hundred blackout. Um, I got a ten and a half inch three hundred blackout pistol that I really enjoy shooting, and so that's probably one of them. Also, I guess for center fire for bolt action, I love. I got my Ruger Ranch back here in seven sixty two by thirty nine. I like the the application of that round as a hunting round, as a as a self defense round. It's inexpensive to shoot. Still, relatively speaking, seven sixty two by thirty nine is one of the lower cost. You know, if you per case, if you buy a thousand rounds of it, it's still cheaper to shoot than a lot of other calibers out there. Um, the fact that there's a variety of ammunition out there you can get for it. There's everything from Hornady to Tula make an ammo for it. You know, you can get the polymer tip stuff for hunting. You can get just the basic ball ammo. And that's probably one of my favorites. I could shoot that thing all day. And the nice thing about it is if I do, it's not that expensive to do. I used to be able to get the 40 round boxes of Tula at Walmart for eight or $9, you know, and I could shoot that stuff and really have a good time. So for me, that's, that's probably the other, you know, from the bolt action side, although I do like 30, I six, three Oh eight, you know, Sandhills at two forty three. That's kind of like the, the, you know, the good old boy caliber for anybody growing up in Nebraska. So that's that's kind of what it's kind of what I enjoy doing. So um, we're also going to take some questions at this time for viewer Q and A. So if you guys have any questions on the uh, YouTube side, go ahead and just put the questions out there, and we can just talk about guns in general. But I kind of want to just get out there and kind of pick people's brains and see what they uh, what they enjoy shooting. Um, hey Travis, yeah, go ahead. I've had a little more coffee. Yeah, man. Forty four special. Tell us about forty four special. What is it? Well, how is it different from forty four magnum? What do we need to know about 44 Special? I know nothing about it. I don't know if you've ever even talked about it on the show before. That might be a caliber we have to investigate. Tell us, teach us about 44 Special, Squib. So 44 Special uh, is the parent case for 44 Magnum. 44 Magnum is a longer case so that you don't try to chamber it in a gun that was designed only for 44 Special. So it's backwards compatible. If you have a 44 Magnum, you should be able to shoot specials in there, but not the other way around. What I like about 44 Special is that you can download it so that it's not so harsh if you uh, are recoil sensitive or, or if you have some sort of health condition as you get older or something like that. But you can also load it up and make it really hot where it starts performing like a 44 Magnum. Uh, it's actually, uh, I hand loaded uh, 44 Special plus P plus Elmer Keith loads for the very first deer that I got. And uh, I, I run Magnums in my Henry, but I also run specials. And uh, uh, it, it's um, it's something that I would probably run in a revolver if I ever get off my sorry butt and finally get a 44 Magnum revolver. I don't know that I'm interested in getting something that's chambered in 44 special only. I suppose if it looked uh, like it was something collectible, something older uh, that I wanted to add to my collection more so than really shoot, or uh, if I got the, a really good price on it, maybe. But overall, I think it'd be like 357 Magnum. Buy, you know, get get your revolver in 357 Magnum and then only put 38s in it, right? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. But but uh, 44 Special is easy for me to reload. It's. Um, it, it is a little bit difficult to find sometimes, and 44 Special uh, costs more than 44 Magnum when, when I bought it commercially. Um, there are 44 Special Cowboy loads out there if, you, if uh, you're into cowboy action shooting. Uh, it's, not, it's not an all-purpose round. I mean, I wouldn't take it out past 125 yards, even though I'm sure a stunt shooter could shoot further than that. But, I mean, it does the job. It, it, it does the job for me. Uh, even though I shoot 44 Magnum uh, a lot, I, I still I, I really have a, a thing for 44 Special. So, a question for you: When you came out to the range and I got to shoot the Henry, the 44, did I get to cycle any special rounds through it at all, or did I only do? Because you had me shooting some really, really hot Magnum rounds, and I mean that, that thing, 
Yeah, that, that was the brown. That was the uh, the cartridge, the style that I used to drop my first deer. That was a forty four special plus P plus with a two hundred and fifty grain jacketed soft point, and it had seventeen and a half grains of Alliant twenty four hundred in there. So mm -hmm. that's that's really hot for a special. Any any cycling issues at all running it through the Henry? I understand you say there's that backwards compatibility, but because it's such a shorter round, is there any problems with pickup or extraction running it through a lever gun? Uh, in, in in the big boy, I haven't noticed. I haven't had any issues, and I haven't noticed any um, uh, any difference between running magnums or specials. I mean, I've never tried to like stagger it. You know, a magnum special, magnum special. I've never tried that to see what that would do. And I've never tried it in any other lever guns. Uh, so I, I really can't say. They work uh, fine in my Marlin. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay. 336, Tony? Is that, no, is that what you... Uh, what, 1894. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. I got you. Oh. Okay, so there's a possibility for you there. Um, yeah, so let's see what we got. We got some comments coming out here about uh, 44... Who, who says, uh, uh, buy 44 Magnum and trim down the case, boom, done. No, Foose, that you can do, and if somebody does that, that's on their own. I don't trim down cases because of the head stamp. What it says on the, on the head stamp is what it is if I reload it, and that's just my particular choice. There's, you know, plenty of people cut down plenty of things, and that's but I mean, I have 44 special brass out the wazoo. There was a guy at work that needed 45 ACP brass. And he said, what are you taking trade? I said, you wouldn't happen to have any 44 special. And he goes, I've got tons of it. And we showed up and I had a big bag of, you know, 45 and he had 44 special and we traded and he's walking away snickering going <laughs> sucker. And I'm walking away going <laughs> sucker. I mean, I thought I made out. He thought he made out. And since then I, I have bought some new, and I have uh, saved some uh, range pickups from uh, new ammo that I've shot, commercial ammo, or, or that other people have shot. But I've got tons of special brass, tons of magnum brass. But I'm just not a big fan of cutting it down if the head stamp says it's something else, even though that does work. Well, if your gun's 44 magnum, there's no reason to cut it down. You can just download it if you want lighter stuff. Says, he was just joking, but no, people do that. There are people that do that. They will cut a, a 9 by 19 down to 9 by 18 and obviously with 300 blackout, right? You, If it doesn't already say, you can take 22, 223, 556 and reshape it and cut it down and there's all kinds of stuff that you can and people do it all the time. Uh, I've got some some brass that is uh, uh, eight, or it's uh, uh, 762 by 54 rimmed that is cut down for eight by 50 rimmed. Uh, so, I mean, sometimes you have no choice if it's an antique round or something like that, but um, uh, it's just one of those quirks. Each one of us at reloads, we have certain things that we do that it's not like you have to do this. This is just what we do. You know, like, like Foos having a million primers and it not being enough. Hey, real quick guys, we got another kind of OG from the, uh, the old gun channels family. We've got Smeggy 42 out there. He says, Boos is the guy who shoots nine millimeter, nine, nine millimeter Makarov cut down from nine millimeter. I'm assuming Luger. So, oh man. All right. What else we got out there? So there's a co couple comments being made about that 44 special, uh, where young gun nine, nine, five says standard 44 special out of a longer barrel. Four inch plus is like a 45 ACP as recoil goes. I love it. Foos has a question for us. He says, why are you so sexy and why is 40 superior to 9mm except for capacity? I mean, really, if you get extended mags, capacity isn't really an issue anymore now, is it? So why is 40 superior to 9mm? I don't know. Is 40 superior to 9mm? No. I guess realistic perspective, certain loads of it would have uh, possibly higher velocity and, and more energy uh, delivery. Depends the on only if round the webs or not. The only round that gets to be considered spectacular is 44 magnum all the rest of that shit can go away <laughs> <laughs> hey man tony has spoken the godfather well so he, you and i had this conversation the other day like i personally i've shot 40 i can't see justifying the extra expense of the cost of 40 uh, ammo over nine millimeter to me it makes more sense if you're gonna go more power more money why not go to the 45 and, and as far as terminal ballistics and uh, effect as a self-defense round, you can see that, you know, law enforcement was switching back from 40 to 9 millimeter in some cases because of 
cost. It was simply a cost. Both of them are going to work. Both of them are going to work, but one, you know, is a little bit uh, more expensive, et cetera, et cetera. So you can look I, up. Sorry, Squib. Well, I was just going to say, I think it's more one of those, it's a preference thing. This is this is another one of those where our opinions are not facts, but they're opinions. Well, but, yeah, and I, I I wasn't dogging on 40. I just We always had that argument. So it's oh, like, no, no, it's dogging like, on it's, 40. It's like the hot dog argument, no, argument right? No. But it's to me, it's just like if I'm going to spend – that much more money per round, I'm going to make a bigger jump from nine to 45 than to nine to 40, just personally. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that does make sense, but no dog on 40, definitely dog on 357 SIG. <laughs> if we're going to step up to 45 caliber, why not get a 460 Smith and Wesson Magnum? And then you can always light load it down with either 454s or 45 Colt. Well, said. this old man can't lift one. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> when it's on Tony's terms, but when anybody else wants to step up. No, and and you right. can't put a vertical foregrip on that revolver, Tony, but you probably could put it on some shooting sticks. Okay, well, the reason why you don't get a 460 revolver, or why I maybe haven't got a 460 revolver, is because there isn't another, there, there isn't a, a cartridge based on the 44 Magnum that's larger. Now, somebody might go that new Desert Eagle cartridge where they take a 50 AE and neck it down to 429 no 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 i i need a i need a 44 magnum with a longer case and more powder in a big revolver then right, i could download one, the specials get you the one that's uh custom made in 444 marlin Ooh, dun, dun, dun. that's a 44 <laughs> magnum case only about an inch longer I just heard the hamster wheel kick into overdrive in Squib's head just now. Yeah, but that wheel's pretty squeaky, so it was a loud sound. I, I'm just saying that squirrel is running extra fast now that he said that. I, I heard it kick into another gear. Seriously, though, if you look at the one-shot stop percentages for all the handgun stuff, it don't make a damn bit of difference. You might as well just get a twenty-two. I don't really look at the one shot stop data because I don't carry a single shot defense gun. None of them really do one shot stops. The, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to I'm going to shoot until either the threat is stopped or I'm out, one or the other. So a 22 would work just fine for that. I've heard of a lot of cases where sending a whole bunch of little 22s down range at somebody made them tuck tail and run. That's the whole point. Either you cut off the vitals and turn off the light switch or just the sheer fact that somebody realizes they've been shot. One of those two things is going to make that person go away. But if they're on under the influence of something or enraged or whatever, there's a chance that that I've, I've never ever down power that you need. I've never read or heard an account of a defensive firearm use where the aggressor got hit with a 22 and then all of a sudden stopped and said, oh, my gosh, I just got shot. Damage assessment. Oh, it's only a 22. I'm going to keep charging. That That's kind of the point. You know, any yeah, gun, I'm, I'm just saying what I'm backing you up, Tony. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, a couple more. Here's, another, here's a good question for us to debate for a little while. But what's the best long range caliber? I don't know. Let's just say that we're just talking for, for target shooting. Cause I don't know if we're talking about Smeggy, can you kind of clarify? Do you want us to ask this question in terms of say hunting or something from say, from like a combat perspective or to me, six at one world war two crying out loud. That's I was going to say 30 odd six is going to be up there. Uh, maybe not the most pleasant to shoot. If you're but just ring and steel, ring and steel or putting little holes in paper, six, five Creedmoor is not bad. I don't like it for hunting deer sized game or bigger. But um, it's good for long range. I mean, it's got a great ballistic coefficient, usually. What it is about 6 Creed Creedmoor, a lot of people say, I don't get it. What is it with 6 Creed Creedmoor? It's, it's got more energy and more velocity. It's still running. It just comes out of supersonic. Uh, what is it? I've read three to 400 yards further than 308. So that's one advantage to 6 5 Creedmoor. I don't know necessarily about drop, but I mean, from a ballistic standpoint, I would just argue that it is superior if you want to maintain the energy and velocity now in terms of accuracy, in terms of drop, I really can't speak to that, but there are some the, distinct 
advantages to six five. One of the advantages to six five versus like a two seventy or like even a two forty three or something like that because it kind of falls in between them. Um, you can get different specialized barrels for a six five. There are a lot more different twist rates out there than your typical two forty three or two seventy barrel, which is kind of limited in twist. So most of the loads are built around the gun instead of building the gun around the load. And uh, with 6.5, you can kind of build the gun around the load a little bit. And I don't know, Travis, if you've seen it, that new 6.8 Western that Browning yeah. and Winchester just dropped. Yeah. Um, I was just reading in the latest Guns and Ammo, the, the article, where they're justifying the need for another long-range hunting load. And uh, they, they make some good points. It, it shoots a heavy for caliber bullet, a longer, higher BC bullet, and, and retains more energy than like a 270 at longer ranges. And all I'm re- as I'm reading this, all I'm thinking in my head is, oh, good, it's another two dollar or two and a half dollar a shot hunting cartridge that I don't need. You know the point of this, don't you? Marketing and money. <laughs> no, it's so what? lazy asses don't have to get off their four wheelers and track something. Well, it's it's not only that, but it's so that you can shoot from one mountaintop to the the other side of the canyon. Without having to, to walk all the way down or all the way up and get closer to your, your sheep or your mule deer or whatever. So they're trying to put some convenience in the rounds that they're selling us these days is what you're saying. It's it's because more and more people all the time are, are practicing those thousand yard shots and things like that. So it, if you're going to get good at shooting long range at, at gongs, then you just as well develop a load that's going to let you shoot long range ethically at an animal. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Uh, Squib, you want to talk about this BFR 444 Marlin with a 10 inch barrel, single action? <laughs> is that is that kind of like my 17 WSMI that Sandhills put the uh, link out there for? By the way, you should all watch that video. That's the new upcoming hot little rimfire cartridge that's going to be coming out. So, because that's what the 50 caliber BMG neck down to 17. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it uses like 38 and a half grains of, of powder. It's, it's, it's wicked, man. Pull up a caribou at like 600 yeah. yards with one of those. It has the input to develop a bullet that doesn't disintegrate in the air from the sheer amount of heat the friction generates when you shoot that thing. I mean, it's devastating, dude. It's a whole, it's a game changer. I've said it before. It's a game changer, you know? So, uh, but Hey, Foose is here. Foose, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and, uh, what do you have to say, man? What do you want to, would you like to add anything to the discussion we're having today? Aside from the fact well, that we're, we're getting a little heated out there in the chat today. <laughs> all mine's pretty much satire today no but like with a you know long range hunting round there's rounds that are made for hunting and then, there, then there's rounds that are made for like truly long range stuff um in my opinion uh like 270 and stuff like that that's made for hunting but then a lot of these other ones that are going for a higher um bc and all that stuff yeah, it's made for hunting, but if someone's going to shoot a thousand yards, most likely they're going to have an ATV or something like that with them to go and track. So, or if, or if they don't, they're already five or six miles into the wilderness. So, what's an extra looking around for a couple thousand yards for gain? Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe if somebody's going on a really expensive trip too, they want to make sure that they're going to get that shot. So they're going to just spend the extra money and get that round and get that rifle that's going to do the job for them so that they have a better chance of taking something home. Yeah. But I mean, if you're going to go for like spend 10 grand for whatever, spending two grand for a rifle is not going to be a concern. And putting, you know, two or three bucks per round. That, that's yeah. not going to be a concern. Now, if you live out there, that could be a different story because you walk out your back door and you're shooting 400,000 yards or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the, 40 is better than 9. I was going to say, yeah, going back to that argument, somebody made a comment, well, it is cheaper than 9 millimeter. I don't know. I guess I haven't checked the going price for a box of 40. That used to not be the case, but now, yeah, probably a couple bucks less per box. But Well, yeah, hardly anybody wants it. Come from a reloading standpoint, nine versus 40, you're looking at about a cent to cent and a half difference. And it's all the lead. That's it. What about the powder, the powder requirements for a reloading 40? Is it, is it how many more grains more are we talking to have um, a round to, you know? So for, for me to, to send 
a 125 grain bullet out of a 9 millimeter at about 1040, 1050, I'm using 4.2 grains. Out of a 40, 180 grain to send it at 1,000 feet or right about that, I'm using four, uh, 5. If I want to send it a little slower, I'll use um, 4.8. So you're looking at out of a, a out of a pound jug, you're losing what fifty rounds, something like okay. that. See, it's really not that significant, you know. No. Yeah. No. I, I'm, most handgun calibers out of the using the same powder, the uh, well, uh, unless you go get up into the magnums, that's that's a little different. But you know, whether it's a thirty-eight special, forty-five, nine, three fifty-seven sig. All that stuff, your powder charges are going to be negligible. Mm -hmm. Got my forty-four magnum of the powder that I use to load all the other stuff with. It's only eleven grains, and that's max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would be, you know, if you think about eleven grains, that'd be a little over double of a normal round. You know, so, and, and I bet you you're. Uh, 44 special, you're using what six six grains uh, of that on normal you know, for the mo most part on 44 magnum. I'm not using six, yeah. See, so hell, I don't need magnum loads in this silly thing. I'm not doing nothing but shooting at a piece of paper until it's <laughs> yeah. So, a lot of people pushing for 357 magnum out there is their favorite round. Let's see, Keith Gregory saying that, Thomas Reese is saying that also. Yeah, 357 magnum is a great one. And and 357 SIG, I just, I don't know. I, I like that. I like the idea that I can have, you know, basically magnum power in a semi-auto with triple the capacity of a revolver, double the capacity of a revolver. So that's, to me, that's the, that's kind of the. Uh, so, yeah. so, so 357 SIG, what, what's cool about that is you're able to push, yeah, you're pushing 125 grain at plus P plus stuff. Um, basically. I look at 357 mag and 38 super comp as the same because you're both pushing 115, 125 grain at 1500 feet per second. So yeah, that was just the selling point on the 357 but sig. With was the that magnum powder mm -hmm. I got here, I can take the 44 up to 1850. Now, in all fairness, it is not at all fun to shoot. No. I've done that. 1,700 yeah. I wouldn't, feet per second out of a... I shot it six rounds out of it one night trying to capture the thumbnail I got on YouTube. And I didn't want to shoot it for several days after that because the recoil is immense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, when, when you come down here... Um, I got 158 grain federal uh, 357 mag that you could put out of my LCR. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, now, you guys, you guys I saw the snub nose is a 44 magnum before, and it's the most painful experience I've ever had in my life. So that's definitely up there. So, mm -hmm. you guys on are that, talking, you guys are 1850. About that's that for stuff. a 200 grain bullet, not 240. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Defense dad out there and over here says 454 because school must be the best. All the local stores seem to be stocking it these days. It must be popular. When I tested the 454 Casul out of the, the Ruger revolver that I did a test on a couple of years ago, I didn't think that the uh, it was really that uncomfortable to shoot at all. I mean, that gun is so heavy that uh, really it didn't feel – it kind of felt kind of like almost between a 357 and 44 mag in terms of the recoil and the actual sting of shooting the rounds. I mean, it bucks good, but – it wasn't nearly as painful to shoot as that little Rossi snub nose 44 mag that I that I took it out. Oh, that was fun. I did not enjoy that range test at all. I did like 20 rounds out of 50, and I was ready just to call it a day because it was it just stung so bad. I was so happy when that video was done. So, so hey, I, Travis, I dragged him out of the right platform though. Yeah, you guys that said, um, you know, if you want a 40, just might as well go to a 45. Well, if you're going to go to a 45, might as well go to a 50 GI and just. You know, send a 300 grain bullet at, you know, 900 feet per second. You say 50 GI. We're, we're not talking 50 AE. What is 50 GI? No, 50 GI. GI. Okay, um, well, I, are you 
making this up? Is it like is it like my no. 17 WSMI? Oh, no, okay. no, no. Gun Crafter Industries. Uh, they make a 50 GI. It's a it's a 45 ACP head stamp, but it's a 50 caliber case and bullet. Yeah, look it up. Yeah, it's it's real. It's yeah, real. No, it's a thing. I, I think I'd have heard of it before. So, what do you what do you what do you shoot it through? What are some of the platforms you can run it through? Uh, 1911 Glock. They have conversions for your large frame Glocks. Oh, excellent, excellent. Hey, hey Travis. Yeah. Watch that video on my uh, Taurus Ultralight 44 Mag. Hell, I'd say if you're going for uh, the 45, you might as well just drop down to something cool like 44 Special. Yeah, 44 Special seems to be the underdog caliber of the day, man. I mean, it really yep. has a lot of flexibility. It has a, it maybe you can actually get the stuff you need to reload it, right? I mean, that's a possibility too. Oh, yeah. Well, except for primers. No. But yeah, I, I mean, if, if you try, if you look around or trade, or I mean, you can you can get them if you want them. It just takes a little bit of effort, you know. Yeah. Uh, two gun kitty, kit, the catnip outlaw says try shooting 50 rounds of 44 Magnum out of a Smith and Wesson 329 PD. That would be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. That's like the, uh, the, the the painful hand challenge, right? No, yeah. It, it, if you guys really want something, four hundred uh, was it a uh, four sixty line ball? That's a round, and a five hundred line ball. Oh, oh, four seventy. You thinking about the four seventy five line ball? Ah, I think so. Uh, yeah. a buddy of mine, he, he has a five hundred line ball down in Arkansas. We went and shot it. We put it over a chronograph. It was a 550 grain bullet coming out of a revolver, single action revolver at 1700 feet per second. <laughs> so, comment to Kingpin out there. He had made a had made a comment that what was it, Kingpin? You had said something that there was there is no one round that's best or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that, there isn't. that would probably do it. I don't think you're going to walk away from that one if you happen to catch one of those. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. The, 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 so the, this guy, the reason he has it is he goes um, Africa hunting, and he he only shoots pistols when he hunts. And he took a water buffalo at 15 feet with a single action army through the skull with oh this pistol. God, yes, sir. Yep. Hey, Travis. Is yeah. One How one. in the hell do you hang on to a single action frame? God, I. It said that buying these forty-four true. Magnum single action oh, mistake. It, it it on it. So we, 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 I went and I shot two rounds of this line ball, and then he gave me a forty-four mag, a, free, pre, a pretty potent one, and it felt like a freaking twenty-two. <laughs> After hey, that, Travis. yeah, single shot. What's up? <laughs> I forgot one line. You guys really want to uh, investigate a line? Of crazy wild calibers for handguns, investigate a man called James D. Jones, JDJ. I've got a 375 JDJ, and what that is is a 444 Marlin case, neck down to 375. That thing is a beast. Mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, Sound fun. <laughs> so, 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 some of these wildcat rounds, they, they could be interesting. They could be oh, yeah. very interesting. I've also got the forty-five Win Mag. That's a longer version of the forty-five ACP. Mm-hmm. Man, there, now you guys run all these calibers. Out there. Yeah. Okay, let's let's just, let's run this one around the horn. Then let's kind of talk about this. If you're gonna get, or if you've ever bought in a uh, a pistol caliber carbine, if you were gonna buy one, if you ever considered one, what would you go with? Would you go with say a nine millimeter, forty five ACP, uh, ten millimeter? So what would you do? I mean, it could be an AR platform PCC, or it could be like a Ruger Charger, or whatever. What's it could be. Your use? What's that? Um, let's let's say let's say let's say truck gun slash home defense. And Foose, we'll start with you. Um. What you do for a pistol caliber carbine? I'll go nine mil. Nine millimeter. Okay. Yeah. You know, could we? Stupid question. Could we no, consider full. 300 block PCC? Full. <laughs> because of the. Full, full, yeah. Full length barrel, not a pistol. Oh no! Yeah, no. We're talking pistol. Full we're length, talking six inch length. barrel. Yeah, I, I would go with a nine mil that could shoot plus P stuff. 
Mm -hmm. They were talking like the high point car beat, you know. I mean, that's that would be very easy for you to, you know, it's like the rate of plus B anyway, so it's not a not an issue. So, all right. Um, quick, quick shout out to Two Gun Kitty, the Catnip Outlaw. She's at Shields right now. She's 25th in line, 15 minutes before they open. So it's Black Friday at Shields. People are out there trying to get some ammo. So two, two Gun Kitty, you stay warm. All right. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and move over then. Defense stat, if you get yourself a pistol caliber carbine or if you've ever bought one before, what would you go with? What would you do? Uh, I was actually just thinking about this the other day. I really want one of the Ruger PC carbine takedowns, uh, so 9mm. I think that would be a perfect travel slash truck gun. You can break it down, put it in a backpack, and have capacity, and you can use Glock or Ruger mags. Yeah. Uh, they also have a Mag adapter for Beretta as well, I think. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Okay, so that might be kind of the one go-to. And a variety, I'm starting to notice aftermarket. I don't know about the take that model, but there's aftermarket well, stock. Out there forward so, and and stuff. Yeah. There's also Magwell attachments you can put into a standard uh, Stanag 15 or uh, AR-15 lower that you could switch lock, CZ, M&P, SIG, and... Uh, uh, Beretta mags. Each one's just a different. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I just like that firearm. It's basically the Ruger basically took a ten twenty two and turned it into a nine millimeter for all intents and purposes. And I, I just think it's a neat platform. I was hoping that by now, just for the heck of it, I mean, you're going to say, well, well purpose, but it would be cool if Ruger would come out with one of those in a five seven that would take the Ruger five seven uh, magazine from the pistol. That's five seven is a fun round to shoot. I know you can argue it's it's point or purpose in single action or single not single action, but semi auto. But uh, I'm surprised that they haven't come out with one yet because there's a lot of five seven up now and standalone AR platform firearms that you can buy in that caliber. But um, all right, so Squib, what about you? What would you go with if you're going to get yourself a pistol caliber carbine? Would you go nine forty five ten millimeter home defense truck gun application? What do you think, Squib? Forty five ACP and ten millimeter. Okay. What are the what are the options for? And I never look into this. Options for forty five ACP plus P. Is there a lot out there? Are there a lot of options to choose from, or is that just something that you just generally don't see? Stupid question because you know I know of critical defense and I've got some federal syntax stuff or whatever uh, hollow points. But what do you think about that? I mean, you can buy it or you can make it. Um, yeah. uh, just make sure that your firearms plus P rated. That's all. Yeah. Like the SR nineteen eleven is plus P rated, so yeah, okay. yeah. So you got some possibilities there. All right, uh, Sandhills. What about you? What would you go with for a pistol caliber carbine? I think it would depend on whether or not the uh, the pistol brace issue is going to get resolved, because as well, long as what, 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 what we're saying full length rifle. I thought we were saying pistol. Oh. No, oh, pistol caliber. You can get a inch barrel. Can it be a? Can it be yeah. a? Can it be a char? That's why I'm asking. Would it be a? Can I do a PC charger? Well, yeah, I or guess. Does it have to have the 16 inch barrel? Either or, I guess it doesn't really make any difference. Well, yeah, I'm interested in the caliber you would choose. You know, which one would you go with? Well, I don't know enough about the the Ruger PC uh, carbine. Do, can those take a collapsible stock? Because I think that would be ideal. Yeah, they make aftermarket stocks for them. Okay, if if that's the case, then then that one. Otherwise, the pistol with the brace, um, just because not so much for me, but I really, really want to look into either a, a pistol caliber carbine or something to that effect, just to to maybe get my wife into the into the the rifle world a little bit, and just because of she stood off to the side from the AR, and we all know that you know when you're when you're shooting the AR, you don't you don't feel the muzzle blast, you don't hear the muzzle blast. There's no recoil. But, <laughs> oh, no, no, but no. I gotta I gotta convince her <laughs> yeah. of that. So I need to either get either get an uh, an AR uh, twenty two long rifle AR or the conversion kit or something to get her on that one or get her something like in nine millimeter. And we've got no shortage of Glock magazines. So whatever yeah. it is, it's gonna have to take Glock mags. And with about two minutes and a screwdriver, you can get that that Ruger pistol caliber carving into taking Glock mags. It, well, I mean, if you have a bunch of, abundance of Glock mags, just get that, um, um, oh, the Gatling gun that takes Glock mags. Just get that. Oh, yeah, the one that <laughs> Mac does, you just turn yeah. the crank on it. And yeah, then, da, 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 da. My, uh, my brother-in-law actually has one of those. He took it out yeah. to Lexington to the machine gun shoot. 
Yep, yep. I think you showed me videos of that. You showed photos of it. I haven't, yeah, I haven't posted them up for the world happen. yet, but yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's a it's 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 cool. You can go through a lot of ammo in not a lot of time with one of those, and it, it's not even regulated because it's not a machine gun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sad part is when it came out, we didn't have the ammo issues that we had now. You know, the only thing there. is, um, the uh, the, when Tipman puts those out, they've got. It's a cool little design, but the carriage has got like a horrible, just a like a sprayed on finish on the wood and big old knobby pneumatic tires. And it doesn't look like a Gatling gun. So my brother-in-law is actually, he's pretty good at, at woodworking. So he, he uh, stripped down the, the carriage, refinished it, stained it beautiful, and then built wooden spoke wheels to put on it. And yeah. it looks cool. That's that would awesome. look nice. I'll, I'll have to, uh, uh, those of you that are on my Facebook page, I'll, I'll put some pictures up here later today. That's yeah. Awesome. Squib, I'll send them to you. Hey, guys. Uh, we'll continue the discussion in a second. Alaskan Ballistics is joining us. Hey, what's going on? Is it good morning or good night for you where you are, sir? See, he's well, find Alaska, Alaskan Ballistics, you out there, buddy? Okay, we'll give him a second to, to join in. You, All right, you're so muted we'll, if you're trying to talk, Alaska. We can't see you. Yeah. All right, so we'll we'll get to him here. We'll get to him here. Uh, moving on, continue the discussion on this. Tony, if you're going to go with a pistol caliber carbine, what caliber would you buy it in? What would you go for? Uh, 44 Magnum. I already did. What are the – yeah, which one Which one do you have? What We talked about this before. What The Marlin 1894. Okay, I guess I never thought about a lever gun. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking more like like semi auto, like a Ruger Charger, or maybe the the Beretta CX four, you know, or maybe like an AR pattern or something like that. So why not yeah. a gun that's got some cool to it? Oh, I don't disagree with you at all on that one. Good choice, good choice. Oh, he got disconnected. Okay, um, all righty, fair enough. Uh, single shot. What would you say? What would you go with in a in a pistol caliber carbine? I guess it really it is kind of an open definition. It'd be whatever you want it to be. But what do you think, single shot? Oh, I got a toss up between two of them. I like that Ruger Deer Stalker and 44 Mag. That's a nice, short, light, mm-hmm. easy to handle uh, package. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking seriously about building a 45 ACP on an AR platform. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. So, a lot of options for that, too. So, um, oh, yeah. see what we got out here on the YouTube side? We have a few comments. I think these are about the uh, the PCC charger. We've got uh, Ozzy Orsborne says, I don't have a brace on mine, buffer tube with foam pad. Uh, let's see. Ruger and 44 mag, bring it back, says Tommy Gunn. Okay. The CX4 is nice. The CX4 PCC, that's a recommendation. Uh, let's see. Two Gun Kitty, the cat in Ballas says, people should troll the Yankee Marshal to shoot 25 rounds of 44 mag out of his Smith & Wesson 329 PD. And that he says is a great choice. Got rid of mine since it's abusive to shoot. Yeah, but he shoots some fairly large caliber handguns. He's probably just a little bit used to it or more conditioned to it. Um, YNH says, I've seen the PC chargers at the gun shows. Private sale, $900 to $1,200. I've seen them for, what, $700 defense stat? How much are they at Shields? Were they $700? Seven, $699, right? The chargers or the carbines? Uh, the carbine. The carbine, yeah. Yeah, when, when they have them. But they're, I mean, yeah, probably not $7, seven $750, seven I think. Yeah, that's a little you know, pricey. Yeah, you used to be able to get them for like four, four fifty. Yeah, now it's pretty much up to full MSRP right now. So, uh, Kingpin says PCC High Point. Yeah, the High Point carbines. I had one of the first gen ones when they came out. It was fun to shoot. I had one in nine millimeter. They are plus P rated. You've got a heck of a warranty on them. You got a lot of magazine options. They've got those red ball mags for the nine millimeter, which gives you twenty rounds. I mean, they're like a long banana sticking out of the bottom of your pistol grip, but you have that option. Um, again, the problem with that one defense that is you and I were talking about uh, <laughs> honest analogs reviews of it, the not no ambi option. So if you're a lefty, your knuckle or your finger is going to keep hitting that magazine release when you're trying to shoot it. So it's not, you know, it would be nice if they would just offer, you know, a reversible magazine. You know, if the world actually, point. if well, the well, world well. actually cared about left-handed people, there'd be more left-handed stuff out there. The fact is everything's right-handed because left-handed people are just weird defense dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, and yeah, the 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 high point, yeah, it, it really I, it surprised me because I had thought about buying one, but the 
what what I've seen on that and a bunch of reviews or some other reviews is the mag release runs right where a left handed fingers left handed person's trigger finger <laughs> rides right along the pistol grip. What would be worse than being left handed is being left handed and living in the central time zone. Then you're really really confused. Yeah, we're definitely <laughs> that's definitely a rare rare breed. I must say. So <laughs> now, you know, I will say this: I can cut paper right handed. I can shoot guns right handed. Hand Even guns. worse than being Hand left-handed. Guns. Even worse than being left-handed and living in Nebraska is coming from like Phelps County. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't hit. I can't shoot the broadside of a barn right-handed with a rifle, but it's partly because I'm really, really left eye dominant, and I am not a contortionist. I cannot get over there to sight in. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah. I shot all the competitions right-handed, but left-eyed. Wear an eye patch. Nope. The, 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 the reason I uh, went with a 9mm that takes Glock mags is because you could have uh, MBX makes uh, 58 round mag extensions. <laughs> so you could have 58 rounds in a magazine if it takes Glock mags. So it's a possibility. Hey, uh, real quick, let's let uh, Alaskan Ballistics give himself a little intro to the channel. Alaskan, can you, can you hear us okay, buddy? I can hear you this time. Yeah, there I said go. Go. couldn't hear so, you. So. so welcome, welcome to the Caliber Corner. Uh, so what? We're just having a little discussion. Why don't you talk about your channel real quick? Get your plug in, and then tell us what are what, what's one of your favorite calibers to shoot? Because you test a lot of different kinds of ammo on your channel. Real heavy on the ten millimeter side. Uh, what would you have to say? What 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 can you tell us about yourself? Well, uh, thanks for letting me join again. It's been a while. I'm I'm sorry. It's like uh, really early in the morning here. But oh, uh, and I always want to go on your show, but it's I'm usually sleeping, <laughs> so I always yeah. have to catch it the next day or listen the next day when I'm driving to work. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's six thirty a.m. here. So talk about Central Time being uh, crazy. It's uh, we're four hours behind. We're an hour behind uh, Left Coast Time, yes. Left Coast Time, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, we uh. Tommy um, Coast. So my channel is just uh, I do uh, everything I can over the chronograph and uh, anything I can get my hands on, any type of gun I can get my hands on, and uh, any type of ammo combination with that gun, and then I'll shoot it into a redneck science test. That's what my channel is all, all about, some fun, some cork ribs and shoulders, and I do everything from twenty two long rifle to the biggest I've gotten on the channel so far is three seventy five Ruger. So, um, and uh, so I saw the topic today, and favorite uh favorite calibers i'd say you know i have to break it into handgun into rifle yeah. there's no way i can choose between one favorite caliber oh yeah one. yeah 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 well i'm a handgun for me is 10 millimeter um mm -hmm. simply because um wh while i prefer like 460 roland or 45 super those are both like nominal to get ammo for comparatively um in normal times yeah. and uh uh, like right now, you could probably find 460 rolling easier than 10 millimeter, but here. Um, but I'd have to say uh, 10 millimeter because you've got, uh, I've got defensive ammo that out of the six inch Glock 40 is getting over 800 foot pounds of energy. I've got bare defense loads that will get the penetration that are seven to 900 foot pounds of energy. Um, and so, and that's in the, in the Glock 40. And that's a good home defense load, home defense gun. You're talking about the same kinetic energy that a uh, ten and a half inch AR pistol has, as far as kinetic energy is concerned. Sometimes a little bit more, depending on your setup and everything. And I, I just think that ten millimeters, your best all around handgun cartridge. You know, if the Russian zombie apocalypse slash ATF leftist take over, and they're all parachuting over Alaska. And, you know, ten millimeters is a good handgun to have. And there's more 10 millimeter here than anywhere in the world. Oh, yeah, it's probably a popular round. Now, what about your prices, man? Pre-pandemic pricing, were you paying just what we were paying? Mainland? I, I mean, was like, you know. at, I would pay what you would pay on the shelf, but not necessarily <laughs> online prices. Um, yeah. So uh, there is a little bit more in shipping for the local dealers, but you didn't see it in Cabela's or Bass Pro, whatever it was in Texas yeah. and Cabela's. It was, in, it was in Anchorage, you know. But local dealers you typically have it for a dollar or two more than Cabela's for shipping. Because um, ammo can't be shipped here unless it gets on a barge in Washington and goes through exportation process and then gets put off that barge somewhere in Alaska, one of our few ports that have a road system. And so 
it's uh, uh it's pretty difficult to get ammo here especially special order or anything like you, you want but uh that kind of thing mm -hmm. so but a uh, rifle caliber a rifle caliber really hard for me to pick um you know but i'd have to go up here seven millimeter remington magnum if you want an all around most people would say 300 remington magnum oh winchester magnum excuse me um, but I went to buy a 300 and all they had left that day on the Black Friday special was seven millimeter. I, ha I've fallen in love with it since. I mean, I had a group the other day that was 0.34 inches or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, I, and I see that one on this. That's one of the few caliber centerfire calibers that are on the shelf, basically consistency consistently at the, uh, the local gun store that we have here in town that I go look at. So. Well, ship it here because I don't have it oh. on the show here. <laughs> we don't have yeah. any hunting on. Like the last time I went on to like Sportsman's, the only things you're going to find are like 338 Winchester Ultra Magnum, which you think people would have here and people do, but you know, they not in the quantities that people think about because um, it's still rare. Uh, like I saw some seven millimeter Ultra Magnum, some 270 Weatherby. But it's the really rare, rare stuff. There's a ton of six millimeter Creedmoor on the shelf here, but no six five hardly. Yeah. And when six five is here, it's gone. So yeah. A couple comments coming from the YouTube side, real quick. Tommy Gunn says JR Carbine Glock mags and or JR Carbine takes Glock mags, and I'm a Southpaw. Come on, guys. So there must be some other options. Now, Tommy Gunn's up in Canada, so there may be some different options for Canadian customers versus those of us that are here in the U.S. Uh, Thomas Reese says, if I got a high point carbine, it would be the 10 millimeter. Yeah, that would definitely be the one I would like to try. And I'm kicking myself because pre pandemic, I was finding the, the high point carbines for 279 on gun broker, just for the basic all black one, just their basic bread and butter model. I really wish I would have bought that. Uh, Smiggy 42 says my buddy has a nine millimeter high point. They are heavy. Yeah. That's something you were mentioning about. They are pretty heavy, cumbersome. You don't have a lot of rounds necessarily. So, so Alaskan, I got a question for you then. Um, Alaskan ballistics. When is Glock going to come out with a single stack 10 millimeter? I don't think they're going to. It's too popular in the double stack. The The whole point of um, the, having a Glock 20 over a 44 Magnum, which has considerably more power, mm -hmm. is the fact that you have 15 plus one capacity. Yeah. And um, I don't think they're going to. They, they sell the 29, 20, and 40 are sold. You know, we couldn't, when I was working the counter this summer in stock, if we got 20 of them in, they were gone in an hour. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, um, it's too popular. And if, if you want single stack, well, the, the 1911 technology, the SIG 220 are there and, yeah, yeah. and arguably smoother guns. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen Cosin Arms. It looks like Cosaint Arms, but it's Cosin Arms. They make a, like an officer link and like a standard length, um, 10 millimeter 1911 that you can get for carry and they're they're you know yeah you got a lot i always forget about the 1911 platform for 10 millimeter i always sit there and think oh it's got to be polymer or whatever but yeah the fact that you can get so many different options from you know, 10 millimeter for 1911s is really makes it a viable option my first pistol that i ever bought my first handgun was actually a gen 2 glock g20 and the only reason why i didn't hold on to it is because at the time i was a college student it was very expensive to shoot there really was no ammo purchasing online at that point back in the mid nineties. Ammo locally was expensive. Just going to the range was pricey and I really wanted to shoot it a lot. So then I decided to go ahead and trade it in, actually trade it in on a Smith and Wesson SW 99, which was the uh, Smith and Wesson version of the Walther P 99, just a nine millimeter. Cause it was cheaper to shoot at the time. Really wish I wouldn't have done that. I still want to go back and, and get myself a G 20 at some point. And I'm kicking myself because I was with Foose at Cabela's in Papillion, Nebraska and they had a Gen 2 G20 used for $400. And I'm just I'm kicking oh. myself for not buying it because I'm like, oh, at the time we were moving and there's all these expenses. And I just didn't want to drop another $400. I just bought an, a, um, a Marlin, um, not a Marlin, a Henry 3030 with the octagon barrel and the mm. color case hardened finish. I just dropped like $700 on that. I just spent $800 on a freaking PSA AKV because I was finally able to get one. And I'm just, that's the one. I will at some point, I'm definitely going to pick one up. So. Uh, G20 is one of my favorite handguns all around. What's that? If you haven't shot the G40, um, 
you you might want to look into the G40 because the I tested it maybe on the channel is that the MOS is that yeah the oh, MOS I, yeah yeah, yeah. Or the front oh, yeah. heaviness just really tames the 10 millimeter recoil oh yeah I shot it I when I took it um standard SS Pond gave me like five different brands of ammo to take out with it. I did a whole ammo test. I think it was a G40. I have to go back and look at my video, but it was, it was definitely a smooth shooter. And I had the, the red dot on the top. I can't remember if it was a uh, vortex or Trigicon that I was running on the top of it, but it was, it was fun to shoot. It was definitely fun to shoot. Yeah. Uh, Sandhills, were you going to say something real quick? I was just going to say that gen two is my favorite Glock style still mm -hmm. to this day. Problem with them now is, you know, kind of like the Gen 1s are starting to become collector's items, so it's hard to pick them up at a decent price, and now it's even worse because, you you know, you don't see a lot of them around anymore, and they're already pushing, you know, 20-plus years old. Yeah. What's the name of that new one that they, they just re-released? It comes in the top uh, of the G80, is it? G, is it the G80? Yeah, it's that Gen G80. 1 style G17. It's the original pre-G17, which I've seen some good deals on those, too. I've seen a few places selling them for, like, 550 which isn't bad, you know? Um, and that's got that just kind of that nice smooth style. Looks like it might make a nice carry gun, you know. I don't think it even has the pick rail on it, right? It's pre pick rail because it looks like a Gen One design. Um, but I think it is a G80, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm checking to see if we have any other questions out there on the uh, the YouTube side. If not, we're probably going to go ahead and wrap it up. I got a lot of videos I got to make today. I've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got the Patreon drawing later on today on my B channel. I got a drawing I need to do over there. Lots of stuff we're giving away on the channel, so I think we're going to go ahead and call us so I can get started. So, All right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap things up here real quick. So let's go ahead and let the uh, panel give us their outros and their plugs for their channels, and uh, we'll let them go on. So, Alaskan, we'll go ahead and let you start first with your with a plug for your channel because you probably want to go back to bed. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, tell us uh, anything you want to say before we go, anything you want to tell the audience out there. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for sending in the uh, clip for that uh, little music video that didn't didn't do that great. But uh, I got a uh, Mr. SB Tactical drummer here. So oh yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's it there. Yeah, I yeah. probably should have done more, but it was yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that was no, cool. That was, that's an awesome video. Um, yeah. Kingpin, let's put you to work real quick. Um, it's what it's from my cold dead hands. Is that what we call it? Is that what the yeah, song from, from my cold head dead hands song video or something like that? So find that music video kingpin. And uh, if you could, buddy, post that link in there for everybody watching. Yeah. You guys need to check it out. We need to get that in circulation because it doesn't have, unfortunately, a lot of views. And there's a lot that you put into that, man. That's an awesome song. But they, uh, yeah. uh, aside from the time it took to write and record the music itself, it, it's six or seven hours of video editing straight through. You know, wow. it's crazy. Um, trying to link up everybody's lips to the sound. Um, pretty crazy, but, uh, yeah, I've got some handload videos coming up the next few weeks that I did. I tested, cool. uh, some, some random brass, um, 60 grain V max and some, the seven millimeter Magnum with the group I was telling you about with a 120 grain tipped TSX going 3,600 feet per second. So oh, dude, <laughs> that's <cooking. laughs> yeah, that's, that's a B. What kind of. That was feet per second. What's the energy on that? Have you do you have any? Have you calculated that at all? Or yeah, you, it's uh, it's only really around thirty four hundred. You, you don't have enough bullet weight there to have you know, tremendous yeah. <laughs> energy. But yeah, it's it's pretty fast. I uh, I also will have coming up. I took some uh, seven millimeter oh eight uh, Fort Scott tumble upon impact, and mm -hmm. I loaded it up with the same load. It's also one twenty grain, and uh, okay. it oh. Well, a similar load. It was going about thirty-five seventy, and I'm going to see if that penetrated body, body armor, rifle did body armor. So oh, we're going to. Wow. That's going to be on the channel. We're going to see if it does it. So cool. not spoiling the results on that. But. Yeah. So Kingpin said, "Is it on Alaskan's channel? It's on your primary channel, isn't it? The music yes, video. Sir. Yeah, it's yeah, on Alaskan. So look for the Alaskan Ballistics channel, and and it should be on there. So cool. All right, man. Well, yeah, I appreciate you joining in. And I know there's a bit of a time difference, but it's awesome having you here. I'll try to get on your show. Generally, I do a lot more podcasts when school's not going on because I've got the evenings off. I can stay up later and stuff. But I do appreciate you sending me links, and I'll join in when I can, so keep doing that. And if I ever have breaks and stuff where we got some time off, I'll definitely jump in on your, your podcast. For me, I've just been calling tonight at like 9 o'clock every night because i got such a long day up at work. But um, no, anyway, no, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Great having you stop by. Cool uh single shot anything you want to say before we go well check out the channel mm -hmm. single shot with an exclamation point after the t i'm thinking about a couple of videos that i want to get done i want to get a get a couple more pieces of equipment done and uh 
we'll be doing some shooting videos here as soon as it warms up a little bit. It's just too daggone cold out there right now. Uh, this next week, we're going to be in the single digits at night. So yeah, same here. We're going to we're going to yep. hold off on that. I'll be doing some casting, some reloading, uh, working on a couple of other projects as well. But uh, other than that, thanks for the invite. Always yep. have a good time with you guys. Uh, take care. God bless. America moves by truck. Well, take care. We'll uh, catch you folks on the next one. Sounds good, man. Thank you so much. And just kind of a comment I want to make because of the conditions that we have, and I don't have an SUV anymore, um, it's going to be kind of hard for me to get out to the range. The content of my channel is going to slow down a little bit. I mean, I've got a ton of videos for you guys, and I've pretty much put out three videos a week, two to three videos a week for like five years. So there's a lot of stuff for you guys to check out on my channel. But if you only see maybe one video come out aside from Caliber Corner for the next two weeks, it's just because it's not fun filming conditions right now. It's fun to go out and shoot. I love going out and shooting and hunting in all kinds of different weather, but just trying to film when it's, you know, blizzard like conditions, it's just not, not enjoyable. And it's maybe not the safest thing either. But uh, anyway, so if you see things slow down a little on my channel for a couple of weeks, that's what's going on, but then we'll bring it back. So don't worry about that. All right, moving right along. Squib load. Any finding any final words you want to, any words of wisdom you want to leave us with any, go ahead and plug the channel. Anything you want to say, sir? Nah. All right. Powerful words. Well said. All right. Sandhill shooter. Anything you want to say before we go? Uh, yeah, just go check me out on YouTube. Check me out on Facebook. We do a weekly live podcast, kind of like this one, but not nearly as good. Tuesday nights, nine central. Um, we've got Matt Locke from the Matt Locke show down in Texas, uh, joining us hopefully this week, as long as everything works out for his schedule. Um, and I got invited to be on, um, second amendment foundations, the weekly bullet podcast today at noon central with Paul Lathrop. So, uh, go check that out just on YouTube or Facebook, find second amendment foundation, and uh, you'll be able to catch that. It's kind of a wrap up of what's gone on this week. Will you be putting the links out on Facebook too, so we can catch it like once yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. In fact, a lot of people I, like audio I, on Facebook, it might be easier for them. I should be able to post the link up even on, on YouTube on my page on the community tab, too. Cool, cool. We'll be looking for that. All right. And then uh, real quick here before we get over to, to Tony to close it out, uh, Rick's Life as I See It, what time is his show on today? He's got a Saturday show, is it? Three. Three o'clock, uh, two o'clock Central Time, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, nobody cares about Central Time. Th two o'clock Central Time, so... Three o'clock in that time zone where it's too expensive to live there and the taxation is horrible. If nobody cared happened. about it, it wouldn't be the only time zone that mattered, which it is. Exactly. The, the only time zone that matters is Alaska time zone. There, I don't even know what time zone that's called, but the Alaska time zone. So that's, that's, that's what it's called. We, we haven't seen Vandal in here for so long. Brisbane time was actually the, the only one that mattered for a while. Because it is like, isn't that officially where the new day starts on the actual globe? There's there's a certain spot in the world where it's like the. Yeah, it, it's like next week when he's watching us in the mornings or something here. <laughs> yeah. Alaskan, what, what, what is your time zone? I, that's a stupid question. Is it. It's Alaskan Standard Time. Yeah. Alaskan, okay. I guess once, you know, in school, it was just the four time zones and they never included Alaska or Hawaii. We don't know if you guys are grouped in yeah. with some other country like, like Russian Standard Time or what, you know. It's, <laughs> Hawaii now, down here they just call that night <laughs> yeah there you go there you go hawaii is actually an hour behind us and two hours during daylight savings time for some reason and then you're right where the the where the new day starts it's called the international date line it's a little bit beyond hawaii i think it's called if i'm not mistaken whenever there's any kind of an apocalypse that's coming to the world that's supposed to happen whether it's the mayan calendar and this and that there's a place called christmas island and you can look this up it is a resort it is an island i think world scale wise astronomically speaking it is the place where the sun officially rises first so everybody always goes there to see if the place has like been destroyed and there's funny there's there's like a blog for it. they're like nope we're still here another day on the beautiful beach Christmas Island is fine. If you ever look it up, it's the actual spot where, uh, astronomically speaking, the new day actually starts. It's kind of interesting, but don't know why I'm talking about that. Tony, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, just remember the brilliant mathematics of 22 and 44. That's it. That's all you need to know, right? Very simple. 22 times 2, and you're done. That covers the calibers that a person needs. So That's it. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. All right. So let's give a little shout out to all the people watching us today, sticking with us for about an hour and 45 minutes on the YouTube side. Kingpin's out there. Tommy Gun, Young Gun 995. YNH is out there. Thomas Reese to Huya Bar and Girl. 
uh mario mosen's watching today defense dad out there and over here defense dad thanks for joining us today buddy squiblo pulling double duty over there and over here we also got a little smeggy 42 out there the original smegster dj play nice thomas Rees, uh ozzy orsborne's watching today too two gun kitty the catnip outlaws watching also good to have you joining us again poor conservatives out there g23 uh, Guns and Barbecues watching. Ghost Tactical is watching today. Guys, check out Ghost Tactical's channel. It's very good. Lockjaw's out there too watching. Man, we've got a lot of different people out here watching today. This is great. Uh, Kevin June's out there. Johnny B. Johnny B was watching. Hey, Johnny B. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, we're not so spicy hot, but uh, you know, we're, we're, we're on fire today. So uh, Foose is out there. Foose was over here. Foose, thanks for joining us today. Snake Doctor 78. And that might be about it. I'm trying to scroll to catch all the names I can. Anybody I missed, I want to apologize real quick. Uh, MKJO, and we're going to go ahead and call it at that. So anyway, this has been – oh, and Tommy Gunn from Canada. Thanks for watching today. This has been Caliber Corner Season 3, Episode Number 174, where we talked about our favorite calibers, the ammo, had a little viewer Q&A and more. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for watching. We'll have another episode next Saturday. Uh, same time, same channel. We'll start at 8 a.m. Central Time. Probably the most important, uh, you know, time zone anywhere because it's in the middle, it's in the center, and that's uh. remember. So, flat Earthers <laughs> love our time zone because it is in the middle and everything revolves around us. So, anyway, this has been Caliber Corner. Shout out to SS Pond. Thank you for the support. You guys have fun. Be safe. As you know, we will talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Bye, Alicia. Bye, Alicia. Adios, Alicia. Adios. All right.